<coughs> okay, now it's time for the executive director's report. Jacqueline Peta is in her 10th year as the executive director of NCAI. Wow, 10 years. She's a member of the Raven Sockeye Clan of the Clinkett Tribe in Alaska. Ms. Peta previously served as the deputy assistant secretary for Native American programs of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development during the Clinton administration. Please welcome Jacqueline Johnson Peta. Thank you, Gunas Chish. Kus in yo hato asak, suka edi haya hat, kagwan tan yeti yek hitak. My Tlingit introduction, I'm, my Tlingit name is Kusin. I'm from the Raven Sakai house from the Raven clan from Haines, Alaska. I want to welcome my tribal members who are here in the audience here today. Thank you for being here. It's always wonderful to come to California, and I want to be able to first also start my remarks by honoring the local planning committee and the work that they did. The event last night was really beautiful, and to be able to see the richness of the cultures as we travel across the country is really important. I also want to thank um, Don Arnold and Dennis Hendricks for their leadership. I know it takes a long time to be able to do that, but it always is the foundation for the su uh, successful convention. Before I get started with the details of my speech, I want to um, challenge you to think about as our, as our tribal leaders gathered together and our founders gathered together in De Denver in 1944. They gathered together to launch our unique organization whose visionary tribal leaders were put together a strong foundation for who we are today. This NCAI wasn't built to, um, wasn't built to win something new. Instead, our organization was built to defend and advance something which is inherent to who we are as Native peoples. We fight to protect and advance tribal sovereignty in all of our work. Native Vote was captured Indian country's imagination because it's about building our power and advancing our sovereignty. Our work on the Hill with the media to prepare for the future has all one thing in common. That is about our sovereignty. And this is what this great institution is all about. With just 15 days until the election, it's getting closer and closer for the races of the presidential races and, men, and many throughout the Senate, the House, and the state races. As we get closer to the election, it becomes clearer and clearer that every native vote counts. At the presidential level, many of the national polls are tied and all the major swing state polls are within the margin of error. You will hear from both presidential can candidate campaigns this afternoon as they compete for our votes. The success of native vote campaign was evident when both political parties adopted language in their platforms that strongly supported tribal nations. The success is also evident when both presidential candidates gave, the, gave comments to Native media about the importance of our sovereign rights, and you can see that in the screen. In the Senate, of the eight most competitive races, six are Native vote focus states, and our vote will make the difference. While the Republicans originally looked to have a very strong chance to take over the Senate in, in 2012, it now looks like the Democrats may maintain their majority. On the House side, the Democrats need to pick up 25 seats to take back the majority. Well, that does not look likely that the control of the House will switch. There still are a number of toss-up House districts in places like Arizona, Minnesota, Michigan, Nevada, and others where native vote will decide the outcome. Now, I've told you a lot of things we don't know. I thought I'd share with you some things that we do know. There are the top five things that we are sure will be true about the 2012 elections in Indian country. Number one, we need to protect Native voters. You heard Jefferson speak about our new report. Our freedom to vote is online with these voter ID laws. But there is also some assaults on our voting rights and equal access to our polls. Two, Native candidates need our support. There's a large number of Native candidates running for offices, federal and statewide offices, and also for state legislative districts. 
There'll be a lunch on Wednesday here this week um, with the Native Caucus of the state legislatures and as we support the work with them as partners for moving forward Indian Country's agenda. Number three, voter registration will matter because more than one million eligible Native voters were not registered in 2008. One million Native voters were not registered in 2008. Our voice wasn't fully heard. With half a million Native young people turning over 18 in the next few years, this is a critical moment for us to, to register voters in Indian Country. Four, we'll be dealing with a divided government. Whoever wins the presidential election is likely that the Republicans maintain control of the House and the Democrats maintain control of the Senate. This means that our policy issues, um, the, which I'll talk about in a moment, um, will be bi need a bipartisan influence and bipartisan support. It's really absolutely critical that we invest with those, those members of Congress who actually support our issues. And five, we need to tell our story. I wanted you to have the details about how we will hold our um, post-election webinar on November 7th, mark that date, at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Our policy research team will be leading the organization-wide effort to collect the information, post-election information, and we will have a national webinar to be able to share with you the outcome of the elections and what that means for us as we move forward with our strategy for our political agenda for 2013 and beyond. As you know, Native Vote has been a part of our work since 1944. In fact, it was one of the first four resolutions that passed by our, our membership during that historic event. One thing we know for sure that the election will, we, after the election, we will have more work to do. We need to engage young people. We need to create systems to promote voter registration and participation. And we need more Native candidates to run for office. Our political power has led to some important wins in the last a few months. In addition, in addition to the Hearth Act and the Stafford Act that Jefferson mentioned in his speech, we also secured one of the fastest confirmations I have ever seen or maybe even know about that went through the, um, the Senate. The Confirmation Assistant Secretary of Indian Affairs, Kevin Washburn, um, and you will hear from him later this morning. When we gathered together for our Tribal Unity Week in September, we made our voices heard on some individual policy issues. But let's not forget what those policy issues have one thing in common. They are fundamentally about protecting and advancing our sovereign rights. When we raise our collective vote voice to call upon urgent action for the carcery and the Patchak Supreme Court decisions, we weren't just defending tribes under threat from these bad decisions, we are defending our sovereignty. Tribal land restoration is a threshold issue for Indian country. Our land is at the very core of who we are as Native peoples, and we must unite to be able to fight for our land rights. We also work to advance sovereignty by securing passage of the Senate-passed Violence Against Women Reauthorization Act. The bill contains a historic restoration of tribal government authority to protect Native women from domestic violence. Our combined efforts made some progress on the House side to ensure that the tribal provisions are included in any final bill. We're facing the lame duck session, and that's our next best opportunity to advance violence against women reauthorization. But it's also a time when we need to work strategically to protect the Indian country's budget. In the next few weeks that Congress will be in session after the election, there will be some huge decisions about the nation's economic future. While members of Congress are likely to reconvene after Veterans Day, most of the actual work will be likely to happen between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Congress will need to work on a bipartisan basis to avoid what's being called um, the fiscal cliff. The Bush era tax cuts are due to expire, large budget cuts will kick in, and the nation will hit its debt limit towards the end of this year. For Indian country, one of the biggest issues is sequestration. Across the board, cuts of $109 billion if Congress fails to act by January 1st of next year. 
In Indian country, the sequester threatens BIA, IHS, and accounts with 8.2% cuts across the board. It's really to, important to remember that this debate is really not only about appropriations, but it's also about those revenue generators, those things that actually help us balance the budget. And so it's important for, to remember that everyone on both sides of the aisle carry a common goal, and that is to avoid sequestration. The presidential elections will influence the mix of what the proposals are and the solutions that will be put on the table to counter these problems. But regardless of who is elected, our task is clear. We have to be united on our priorities, and the stakes are very high. No one wants cuts to the programs that we care about. And at the end of the day, our programs are less known by many members of Congress. We need to be clear and united to be able to make sure Indian country's budget is protected. Over the last few years, we have built a foundation of success by delivering high quality briefing materials for the Tribal Nations summits and other White House forums. These materials mean that our priorities on the agenda are, key, in, are in the hands of key decision makers in the White House. Just last, night, last month, NCAI, working with the White House, was able to secure a meeting for, with tribe, tri, five tribal representatives and Jean Sperling. Jean Sperling is the president's um, economic, director of ec the Economic Council and clearly a major decision maker in this administration. As the administration and Congress develop policy for the lame duck session, we need to be able to make sure that Indian country's priorities are also heard and on the table. The lame duck um, budget negotiations will include some significant discussion for tax policy. This is an issue where Indian country is absolutely at the table. Congress will be looking at broad reforms. Um, so to an, uh, this is another opportunity for us to advance our sovereignty. We are working on provisions in general welfare, tax-exempt bond financing, trust per capitas, sales tax, tobacco taxes, and so many other issues. We are making progress on these tough issues, and I want to thank our partners, Cat G, USAT, and NAFOA, for all the work that we have been able to do together. When the next session of Congress convenes, we'll have some important work to do to ensure tribal priorities are included in the national authorizations and to advance some tribal-specific reauthorizations. The education reauthorization offers us an opportunity to make sure that tribal provisions are included. As you know, NCAI partnered with USET and NIEA to develop and to draft, draft the Class Act, the Native Class Act, Indian Country's version of the education bill. We need to be your help to be able to make sure that these critical provisions are included in the bill. Another significant reauthorization for 2013 is the Farm Bill. It provides billions of dollars for an array of programs that are needed to make sure that tribes are included. The Senate passed their version in August and providing funding for $969 billion over the next five years. The House was not able to secure their votes and for their version, and it will be a key priority for them during the next session. The legislation that authorizes the administration for Native Americans is also up for reauthorization. ANA is a program that provides critical investments to advance diversified economies and support youth programs. We also have pending reauthorizations, such as the Esther Martinez Language Program, the Nahasda Housing Program, Workforce Investment Act, and others. We need to be able to make sure and, and recognize that our work is cut out for us in the 2013 um, legislative sessions. As we consider our immediate policy opportunities to advance sovereignty, it's critical that we keep our eye on the transition plan. Whoever wins the presidential election, there'll be key changes in agencies and we'll be need to be ready to make sure that this president knows our continuing priorities. Tomorrow morning, we're going to host a session right here in our General Assembly, focused on refining our shared vision for the next, for our trust relationship for the next four years and beyond. As an institution, NCAI is working to reflect the priorities that I've talked about in my report, the report this morning, to advance sovereignty and to prepare um, for the future. One aspect of this effort is to focus on technology as a tool to be able to 
as a tool to be able to help us move our tribal nations forward. We have secured grant resources um, to upgrade the technology at the Embassy of Tribal Nations. This effort will help us launch our virtual institute, an effort to be better connected with tribal nations throughout the United States and to be able to deepen our partnerships with indigenous nations globally. The success of any technology effort depends upon the partnerships, and we're delighted to co-host a summit just this last Friday with Google, American, Google's American Indian Network at the Google headquarters in Mountain View here in California. Participants included tribal leaders, some representatives from um, uh, national intertribal organizations, and national and key national organization partners. We saw that tools can support cultural mapping, language revitalization, improved education efforts, and enhance online collaboration with and among our tribal nations. You'll be hearing from a key um, representative from Google this afternoon. I look forward to having her here. And you'll be hearing much more about this effort from NCAI as we move forward in the future. Our success in advancing technology also depends on our next generation. And this week, we'll be officially launching our NDN Spark um, effort. This is a web-based tool that will help guide Native youth ages 13 to 24 to track their health, to track cultural or physical goals, and any goals that they choose to do for themselves. NCAI plans to build a community of Native youth across the country that will participate in NDN Spark so that they can also extend their social network contacts and to be able to find other people with similar goals and organize monthly challenges around things as we help move our Native leadership forward and they become NDN Spark team players. Our response to the media challenge has also been part of our preparing for the future. We have worked behind the scenes to educate public and key partners to respond to the controversy around the Native heritage of Massachusetts Senate candidate Elizabeth Warren. We issued a statement in response to the disturbing video of Senator Brown's campaign staff doing war hoops and tomahawk chops. We challenged both candidates to stop making Native identity a political issue. We spoke to both campaigns and, and feel like there's an opportunity for to educate whoever is the next senator of Massachusetts, to make, better make sure that they understand our issues. Most recently, I want to make sure that you are aware of the, work, of the work that we're doing, working closely with the National Indian Child Welfare Association to respond to the issues over the baby, baby Veronica case, a case that puts a loving father's attempt to parent his daughter against a non-Indian couple from South Carolina who have hired expensive lawyers and PR firms to be able to actually change, uh, uh, influence public opinions and the courts um, in their illegal attempt to adopt baby Veronica. There was a heavily slanted piece that was on Dr. Phil last week, and we're working with NICWA to help develop those responses and to be able to make sure that our education about this issue is out there. We understand how, it imp how important it is that the public understands the important role of the Indian Child Welfare Act in keeping and protecting thousands of Native children and keeping them with their families and in our community. I want to close my remarks today by reflecting on what gives me hope about our unity and that will advance our sovereignty. I look over the list of 140 events and 35,000 people who participated in our Native Vote Action Week. You can see from the map on the PowerPoint that this was an amazing unified effort. Teachers from Gila River, tribal leaders from the Southeast Alaska, students from Haskell Indian Nations University, and many across the country. I think particularly about the young student in Oklahoma. And she had convinced her principal to host our democ democracy class in, across the school and to post all of our Native Vote materials all over. In fact, her mother called us, urging us to send more materials. She wanted to make sure that her daughter's dream of sharing Native Vote was a reality. Efforts like Native Vote have allowed us, no matter what tribe we're from, 
no matter where you are, whether you're young or old, whether you're from Alaska or from Florida, from Arizona to Maine, to come together around a common goal. But success like this cannot and must not be restricted to voting. It was the strength of our communities. It was the vitality of our cultures that inspired the American democracy. And we must foster these kinds of unified efforts and harness their power to achieve a vision stronger for Indian country for generations to come. What does that mean in practical terms? Here are some of my top ideas. One, get out the vote. As Jefferson said, we have a phone bank here where you can call members of your own tribe and in your own community, invite them to participate to vote on November 6th. I actually took some calls, joined in with the board members yesterday, and made some calls myself. That's why I got this great pin, by the way. Come to Washington. We need tribal leaders here during the lame duck session in Washington, D.C. We urge you to identify yourself with our staff that are over at the table and let us know if you can come during that time. And we will help organize meetings for key meetings for you with members of Congress and help you set up those appointments. We urge you to invest in NCAI and the work that we do. We have in your um, handouts, in your packets with the annual report, an invest in the NCAI sheet. If together we can actually help promote the work of NCAI. If you see the benefit of our work, we urge you to help. If, if you can only commit to $10 a month, and we get 500 people to, to commit to $10 a month, that would be $60,000 worth of support for our unified voice to advocate in Indian country. And I also want to thank particularly the NCAI staff, the staff that's here in the table, the staff that's around here today, we, it is an honor for all of us to serve Indian country, and we are committed to the process for doing that. In conclusion, I want to end with one personal note. NCAI is a family. You are a family, and NCAI staff is a family. This year, you supported me more than ever and my family, and I want to thank you, Gunas Chi Ho Ho. As my daughter faced cancer, I had so many emails and hugs and, and just, just notes of, of thanks and support and the support you gave her directly. And I want to thank you. I want to thank the veterans this morning for honoring my son-in-law who was injured in Iraq and allowing him to carry the Eagle Staff. We are a family. And together, we will accomplish much for Indian country as long as we're there to support each other in sovereignty, in unity. Gunas Chish, ho ho. Need a motion. Thank you. I have a motion to accept the executive director's report and a second. Is there any discussion? All, all in favor say aye. All opposed. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie.